I think you have to be brave to change the culture in any organisation because culture sort of is set, reflects how people have worked probably for years. Uh, so that always requires a bit of, um, I guess, fortitude and uh, strength of character. I think within the FA it's even more difficult because football is like the national religion. Everybody has a point of view in it. The points of view are strong. Um, tradition is deeply felt. So to change the culture there has probably required to have tested me in a in a pretty significant number of ways, uh, but you always know the payoff's going to be worth it. We started like you would in any organisation. People, people who work there want to know what's their overall purpose. You know, why is it, why are they doing something useful or valuable? How they should work together and have an ambition about where they want to get from from here to there. And that's true whether you're playing the game of football, the elite England players or whether you're cutting the grass at St George's Park. Everybody needs there to be a purpose and ambition. You start there really and you find ways of embedding it, making it sensible, making it real. But you're on it all the time and culture change has to happen from the top. You can't delegate it to HR, it has to come from the leader of the organisation. Well, this has been a really testing role for me. I mean, I thought I worked in competitive worlds before, like uh, crisps and biscuits. There's nothing so competitive in this world as football. So A, the competitive element, but secondly, the fact that you're in a goldfish bowl. Every decision you take is poured over in the press. Your competence might be challenged. Your, your uh, you know, I guess, integrity may be challenged. There's such a variety of people wanting to comment on football. So I guess the, I guess the lesson has been resilience in the face of unfounded criticism, but an open-mindedness to hear things that maybe should make you change your mind.